countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, one, fire. My lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas, I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Theater. And tonight is one of those rare nights in the Nerve Rackin' Theater where I can bring you a real classic. Tonight's film is based on a famous short story first published in 1924, which went on to influence many movies and countless television series plot lines from Law and Order SUV to Gilligan's Island. Ha <laughs> ha! Tonight, from 1932, it's the chilling thriller The Most Dangerous Game. <laughs> the Most Dangerous Game stars Joel McRae as our hero and Leslie Banks as our crazed villain. But, you horror geeks out there, will surely recognize Fay Ray and Robert Armstrong, and Darrow and Carl Denham, respectively, from the classic 1933 King Kong. In fact, the jungle scenes in tonight's movie were not only shot on the same sets as King Kong, they were shot simultaneously. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at him go. But now, without further ado, I give to you the epic adventure, The Most Dangerous Game. here on the chart, all right. And so are the marking lights. Then what's wrong with them? Those lights don't seem to be in just the right place. They're both a bit out of position, according to this. Two light boys mean a safe channel between the world over. Safe between the world over doesn't go in these waters. Look here. You'll see the water shoals on the island side, while the deep soundings run to the mainland. Have any of you seen the captain today? No, he wasn't down for dinner. No, and he wasn't down for lunch. He hasn't left the bridge since you decided to come through the channel. What are you driving at? Ever since you gave him those orders yesterday to cut through these waters, he's had the jitters. There's something wrong. 
Yeah, I'm getting nerves myself. <laughs> Doc, what do you recommend for nerves? Give him a shot of scotch. Sure. Uh, give him the whole bottle. <laughs> no, I've got nerves too. Here you are, Doc. Just what you need. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you're right. It is our boy. Good evening, Captain. Good evening, sir. May I speak with you? Why, certainly. Go ahead. We're heading straight for the channel between Brank Island and the mainland. Good. But the lights are just a bit off, according to the chart. But charts are never up to date in this part of the Pacific. You know that. I know, sir, but... Doesn't Brank Island mean anything to you? Well, not a lot. Well, perhaps if I could talk with Mr. Rainsford, he... But Bob's not a sailor. He's a hunter. He's made many of these trips. He's young, but he has judgment. I'll call him. Oh, Bob. Bob. What is it? Yeah, come up here, will you? Just a minute. What's bothering you, Captain? There are no more coral reef, shark-infested waters in the whole world than these. Boy, just take a look at these. You didn't turn out so hot as a hunter, Doc, but oh, what a photographer. Say, if we'd had you to take pictures on the Sumatran trip, they might have believed my book. If you'd have had me on the Sumatran trip, you'd never had me on this one. <laughs> Say, here's the swell one of the ship, Skipper. Well, what's the matter? These old sea dogs tell yarns to kid each other and end up believing it all themselves. Well, I think that Mr. Rainsford should know that the channel lights aren't just in the position given on the chart. Oh. Well, what do you think, fellas? I think we should turn back and take the outside course. Oh, turn no, back no, 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 no. We'll go ahead. Very well, sir. It's your ship. It was the schooner Hesperus, and she sailed the wintry sea. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Let's talk this over. There's no use taking any chances. Chances? That's fine talk coming from a fellow who just got through slapping tigers in the face. Here, get an eyeful of this. And he talks about taking chances. Here's the doc charging the enemy with an unloaded camera. Get the expression on Doc's face, Bill. He looks more frightened than the tiger. He is. <laughs> just what you have on your mind, Doc. I'll tell you what I had on my mind. I was thinking of the inconsistency of civilization. The beast of the jungle killing just for his existence is called savage. The man killing just for sport is called civilized. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit contradictory, isn't it? Now, just a minute. What makes you think it isn't just as much sport for the animal as it is for the man? Now, take that fellow right there, for instance. There never was a time when he couldn't have gotten away. But he didn't want to. He got interested in hunting me. He didn't hate me for stalking him any more than I hated him for trying to charge me. As a matter of fact, we admired each other. Perhaps. But would you change places with the tiger? Well, not now. Mm -mm. Here comes that bad luck lady again. Third time tonight. Here, let me shuffle them. Yeah, wait a minute. Don't evade the issue. Yes, come down speak. Yeah, I asked you a question. Yes. You did? Well, I forgot. No, no, you didn't. I asked you if there'd be as much sport in the game if you were the tiger instead of the hunter. Well, what's the now, Bob? Well, that's something I'll never have to decide. No? Listen here, you fellas. This world's divided into two kinds of people, the hunter and the hunted. Well, luckily, I'm a hunter. Nothing can ever change that. Hang on a second. Hello. Hello down there. Hello, engine room. The panel's flooded. If water ever hits those hot boilers.
What makes you think it isn't just as much sport for the animal as it is for the man? Now take that fellow right there, for instance. There never was a time when he couldn't have gotten away. But he didn't want to. He got interested in hunting me. He didn't hate me for stalking him any more than I hated him for trying to charge me. As a matter of fact, we admired each other. Perhaps. But would you change places with the tiger? You know, that's a good question. Would I change places with the tiger? Well, all things being equal, sure, I guess so. I mean, the hunter has a rifle that could put a hole through a tiger at, what, I guess 500 yards or so? So if I, as the tiger, had a way of accurately shooting my claws and fangs at 500 yards to put a hole through the hunter, while all my tiger buddies just kind of stood around and filmed the whole thing and then we could go out later for a beer, then sure, yeah, I'd change places with the tiger. Otherwise, forget it. Do you love horror, science fiction, B-movies, horror hosts, old-time radio, just plain spooky stuff? Then you should sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. You'll be supporting the production of Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror films ever made. Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, featuring the best of old-time radio horror. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, showing classic 1950s sci-fi shows for Star Cadets of all ages. Plus, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content, like Behind the Curtains of the Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a deep dive into radio horror. Lord Blood Draw's B-Movie Reviews, a look at a classic low-budget drive-in feature, and much more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. That's what he meant. Something behind this, something we don't understand. The weapon he uses, it's unheard of. Blasting flesh right off the bones. Master control to fleet, set flight pattern to minus point zero eight. Increase speed. They're coming right at us! Get down inside the cave! As we return to the most dangerous game, our lucky hunter explores his new secluded home and finds quite a few surprises.
Anybody around, I say? Oh, hello. Is this your house? I'm not trying to break in, but I've been in a wreck. Our yacht just sunk with all hands. I got ashore and found your place here by accident. I'm not trying to intrude, but I'm in sort of a jam. Don't you understand any English? Ivan does not speak any language. He has the misfortune to be dumb. Oh, hello. Are you the owner here? Yes. Welcome to my poor fortress. Fortress? It once was, built by the Portuguese centuries ago. I have had the ruins restored to make my home here. I am Count Zaroff. My name's Robert Rainsford. Glad to meet you. Very glad. <laughs> yeah, Ivan is a Cossack. I'm afraid, like all my fellow countrymen, he is a bit of a savage. Smile, Ivan. Ulignis! I was trying to make him understand there'd been a shipwreck in the channel. Short was me, but how appalling. And you mean to say that you were the only survivor? Yes. I'm afraid I am. You're certain? Well, I'd never left the spot if I hadn't been. The swellest crowd on earth. My best friends. It's incredible. Yeah, uh, such things are always incredible. Uh, death is for others, not for ourselves. Uh, that is how most of my other guests have felt. Your other guests? You mean this has happened before? My dear fellow, we have several survivors from the last wreck still in the house. It would seem that this island were cursed. That's just what the captain said. Only he thought it was uninhabited. Yeah, uh, we Cossacks find our inspiration in solitude. Well, it's a break for me anyway. <laughs> My house is yours, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, you want to change those wet rags immediately. Yes. They look about the way I feel. <laughs> yes. I have some loose hunting clothes which I keep for my guests that you can possibly get into. What vidi evolve crenu cognito? Ivan will show you to your room. Thank you. You'll find a stiff drink there also. Thanks a lot. Prosh you. All pleasure is mine. All set. I'm afraid we have finished dinner, but I have ordered something for you. Thanks. I don't feel like eating. Oh, dear, dear. Well, perhaps later. Now then, what do you say to coffee and most charming company? It is hard to forget your comrade's fate, I know, but our feminine guest is easily perturbed. If I could beg you to put a good face upon the matter, uh, assume a cheerfulness you may not feel. Why, sure, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Trowbridge, may I present Mr. Robert Rainsford, Miss Eve Trowbridge. How do you do? How do you do? And her brother, Mr. Martin Trowbridge. How are you, old chap? Pretty well shaken up, I guess, huh? Coming out of it now, thanks. We know just how it feels, don't we, Eve? Indeed we do. Perhaps Mr. Rainsford would like some hot coffee. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Rainsford, please sit here. Oh, thank you. Die goes to coffee, vodka. Vodka, that's the stuff. One shot will dry out quicker than all the coffee in Java. I have to toss it off, though, like this. Now, Martin, you don't have to drink it all tonight, do you? Don't be ridiculous, sis. We are victims of circumstance, same as Mr. Rainsford. And if anyone has a right to his liquor, it's a victim of circumstance. Isn't that so, Count? Oh, of course, yes. You were in a shipwreck, too, I understand. Yes. Our lifeboat was the only one saved. My brother and I and two sailors. The Count found us on the beach with nothing but the clothes on our back. <laughs> Those channel lights must have been shifted. I wonder it hasn't been reported. Well, we'll report them. Just as soon as we get back to the mainland. You see, the Count has only one launch. And that's under repair. Uh, Russians are not the best mechanics. 
I'm afraid we'll have to be patient a few days longer. That's all right with me. I feel as if I were living on borrowed time right now. Uh, speaking of that, perhaps now you'll tell us a little bit about who you are. Just sketchily, you know. Born, married, why I left my last job. No, 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 no. One moment, please. Mr. Rainsford need never explain who he is in my house. No? No, we entertain a celebrity, Miss Trowbridge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Let me guess. I know. Flagpole sitter. Oh, flagpole sitter. <laughs> I know. He wrote some books. No, he lived some books. If I am not mistaken, this is Mr. Robert Rainsford, who hunts big game so adventurously. Yeah? Yes, sir. I've lugged the gun around a little. I've lugged the gun around a little. No, I have read your books. I read all books on hunting. A papyrusu? Thank you. Only in yours have I found a sane point of view. What do you mean, sane? Cigarette? Hmm? Yeah, thanks. You do not excuse what needs no excuse. Now, let me see, how did you put it? Hunting is as much a game as stud poker. Only the limits are higher. You have put our case perfectly, Mr. Rainsford. Well, then you're a hunter yourself. We are kindred spirits. It is my one passion. <laughs> he sleeps all day and hunts all night. And what's more, Rainsford, he'll have you doing the same thing. We'll have capital sport together, I hope. Don't encourage him. You know, he's had our two sailors so busy chasing around the woods after flora and fauna that we haven't seen him for three days. But what do you hunt here? I'll tell you. You'll be amused, I know. I have done a rare thing. I have invented a new sensation. Yeah, and is he stingy with it? What is this sensation, Count? Mr. Rainsford, God made some men poets. Some he made kings, some beggars. Me, he made a hunter. And me, he made a horror host. And as a horror host, I can see some pretty rough times coming up for our hero. I mean... He's trapped in this secluded fortress with this menacing Cossack and his obviously nutty master, along with the survivors of the previous shipwreck, as though shipwrecks are a weekly occurrence on this island. Maybe if Rainsford got a really good running start, he could dive into the ocean and swim back to America. It's worth a shot. Pun not intended. You're not unaware of my position in this house. Well, uh, maybe you can tell us about it. I'm being kept a prisoner here against my will. I'm alone and friendless. They're trying to destroy my mind, Mr. Lee. By innuendo and indirection, they're trying to make me believe I've done something dreadful in the past. Perhaps I can explain, Mr. Lee. We don't believe there's anything wrong with Laura now. But we are sure something will happen to her mind if she continues to live under this strain. Just as I told you, they're behind it. Can't I make that clear to you? They spend all their time trying to terrify me. You have to put the blindfold on, and you will know the truth. No! And now back to the most dangerous game. As Count Zaroff goes on and on about his deep, profound, and rather disturbing obsession with hunting. My hand was made for the trigger, my father told me. He was a very rich man with a quarter of a million acres in the Crimea and an ardent sportsman. When I was only still up high, he gave me my first gun. Good for him. My life has been one glorious hunt. It would be impossible for me to tell you how many animals I have killed. But when the revolution played up... Look out. Victory, stop. Oh, I'm so sorry. Count Zaroff was so interesting, I didn't realize the danger. 
Oh, it's all right now. What were you saying about the revolution, Count? Oh, merely that I escaped with most of my fortune. Naturally, I continued to hunt all over the world. It was in Africa that the Cape Buffalo gave me this. That must have been a close call. Yes, it, it still bothers me sometimes. However, in, a, in two months, I was on my way to the Amazon. I'd heard that the jaguars there were unusually cunning. No, no, no. No sport at all. Well, conditions are bad everywhere these days. One night as I lay in my tent with this... this head of mine, a terrible thought crept like a snake into my brain. Hunting was beginning to bore me. Is that such a terrible thought, Count? It is, my dear lady, when hunting has been the whip for all other passions. When I lost my love of hunting, I lost my love of life. Of love? Well, you seem to have stood it pretty well. I even tried to sink myself to the level of the savage. I made myself perfect in the use of the Tartar warble. Tartar woods? Tartar wobo. <laughs> that one up there. That's cute. Even to this day, I prefer to hunt with it. But alas, even that was too deadly. What I needed was not a new weapon, but a new animal. A new animal? Exactly so. You found one? Yes. Here on my island, I hunt the most dangerous game. The most dangerous game? You mean tigers? Tigers? No. The tiger has nothing but his claws and his fangs. I heard some queer beast howling back there along the water. Was that it? It's no use, Rainsford. He won't tell. He won't even let you see his trophy room till he gets ready to take you on the hunt of the great Watson. <clears throat> my one secret. I keep it as a surprise for my guests against the rainy day of boredom. Listen, old boy, you let me in on that game and I'll bet you I'd go for it. You know, Rainsford, he hasn't failed yet. If he says the thing is good, it is good. He's a judge of liquor, wizard of the contract, Play the piano, anything you want. He's a good host. And a good scholar, eh, Count? Yes, yes. You want me to go hunting? All right, you just say the word. We're pals. We'll have a big party, you get cockeyed and go hunting. <laughs> a completely civilized point of view. Now listen, I'll tell you what you do. You come to my place in the Adirondacks sometimes, see? We'll have a private car, liquor and gals on the trip, and the guides will make the deers behave. <laughs> I think we'd better change the subject. All right. Says it's something. Oh, I know. Play the piano, huh? If you wish. Good idea. Play the piano. Now leave it to me and I'll fix everything. Perhaps the Count doesn't want to play. Now there you go, says dry cold water. Now leave me alone. I know where the piano is. I'm perfectly sober. <laughs> A charming simplicity. Completely civilized, did you say? Yeah, he talks of Wayne and women as a prelude to the hunt. We barbarians know that it is after the chase and then only that man revels. Yeah, it does seem a bit like cocktails before breakfast. Of course, yes. You know the saying of the Ogandi chieftains. Hunt first the enemy, then the woman. That's the savage's idea everywhere. It, it, it is the natural instinct. What is woman? Even such a woman as this, until the blood is quickened by the kill. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you Americans. One passion builds upon another. Kill, then love. When you have known that, you will have known ecstasy. Oh, Martin. Introducing Zaroff, the keyboard king, in his Brank Island Hour. Come on, Count, now you're shown. What do you suggest? Oh, just a good tune, but not highbrow like last night. Just a good tune, see? I see. Yeah. Oh, it's 
hunting dogs. Keep your voice low and listen. It isn't true about the launch needing repairs. I heard it leave the boathouse last night. It returned this morning. You mean he's keeping you from returning to the mainland? Yes. Well, perhaps he enjoys the company of two very charming people. Two, maybe. There were four of us a week ago. The other two have disappeared. What do you mean? One night after dinner, the cop took one of our sailors down to see his trophy. At the foot of those stone steps. That iron door? Yes. Two nights later, he took the other there. Neither has been seen since. Have you asked him about them? He says they've gone hunting. Oh, be careful. He's watching you. Will you smile as if I've said something funny? <laughs> now, look here. You must be mistaken. Not now. This... Applaud. Ah, boy, ah, boy. Oh. Thank you. Well, I tell you, smack some in ivory, eh, Rensford? It was splendid. Don't stop, please. No, I'm afraid we have failed to hold the full attention of our audience. Well, I... I expect it's rather difficult for Mr. Rainsford to concentrate on anything after all he's been through. Oh, my dear lady, you are pleading for yourself. I can see the drooping of those lovely eyes. Excuse me. Provadeo Naver. You know, the Count's worse than a family governess. Every night he sends us off to bed like naughty children. Oh, no, my dear. No. Charming children. Yeah. You hear that, sis? Now, try along upstairs and don't bother us grown-ups anymore. Well, after that, I guess... I guess I'll have to go. Good night, Mr. Rainsford. Good night. We'll be seeing each other at breakfast. Good night. Good night. Good night, sis. We won't be seeing each other at breakfast. Oh, my dear Rainsford, I have been most inconsiderate. You must be feeling the need of sleep, too. Yes, I am just about all in. Then Ivan will show you to your room. Oh, come to the door. Oh, Martin, turn in early, please. Don't worry. The count will take care of me, all right. Indeed I shall. From the depths of hell comes The Devil's Messenger, starring the master of mystery, Lon Chaney, and Karen Cannon. You can leave my message. You'd have to go back. Up there. Oh, I can't. I won't go back. You deliver that to a Mr. Donald Powell. Don't be afraid of me. The Devil's <laughs> Messenger delivers gifts from hell, turning man into a ravaging beast. I took a picture of that old farmhouse. There's nobody in the picture. You saw it. Was there anybody in it? No, there wasn't. Somebody has come out of that house, and they're coming toward me. Back from the dead, his lovely victim seeks revenge for her horrible death at the hands of a man driven mad by a gift from hell. Trapped in her icy tomb until the devil's messenger exposed her nakedness in her crystal prison. Now let's get down to here. She becomes the object of a scientist's lust. His consuming desire for her drives him to commit murder, to keep her for himself. Not since he received the apple have gifts inflicted such unnatural consequences. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. I don't even know you. Crystal ball foreshadows June. For it is the plaything of the devil. And only he can change the events it foresees. <laughs> you must see what the devil's messenger has in store for you. And now back to the most dangerous game. As the vodka guzzling Martin may get a chance to see Count Zaroff's trophy room and go on a hunt. Well, good night. Good night, sir. Sleep well. Oh, well, here's long life. <laughs> 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 
A long life. Tell me, Mr. Throbridge, are you also fatigued? Tired? Me? <laughs> you know I'm not. You know, Rainsford, we two are just alike. Up all night and sleep all day. <laughs> well, good night. Well, what are we going to do, huh? What's the big idea? I thought that perhaps tonight you would like to see my trophy room. Your trophy room? I'm sure you will find it most interesting. Say, that's a great idea. Oh, now we're pals. No more secrets now, huh? We'll make a night of it. I hope so, Mr. Trowbridge. Just you and I, pals. We'll have fun together, huh? Precisely, yes. Fun together. Ah, oh, boy, Connie, old oh boy, old oh boy, Connie. <laughs> Downstairs in five minutes. Thank you. Hola, je hier voor. Naast kan ik Come, come, my dear Rainsford. 
I don't want to treat you like my other guests. You and I, we are hunters. So that's your most dangerous game. <laughs> yes. My dear fellow, I intended to tell you last night. But you know Miss, uh, Miss Trowbridge. You hunted him like an animal. Yeah, I, I know what you think, but you are wrong. He was sober and fit for sport when I sent him out. An hour or two strapped up in here, brought him to his senses. You raving maniac! Yes, yes, yes. I'll take it off. When we finish, the stupid fellow tried to escape through the swamps of Fog Hollow. You see, when I first began stocking my island, many of my guests thought I was joking. So I established this trophy room. I always bring them here before the hunt. An hour with my trophies, and they usually do their best to keep away from me. Where do you get these poor devils? Providence provided my island with dangerous reefs. But there are light buoys to mark the safe channel. <laughs> they do not always mark it. You shifted them. Precisely right. Too bad your yacht should have suffered. But at least it brought us together. You take half-drowned men from ships you've wrecked and drive them out to be hunted. I give them every consideration. Good food, exercise, everything to get them in splendid shape. To be shot down in cold blood. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I admit with this annoying fellow, but usually I give them uh, hunting clothes, a woodsman's knife, and a full day start. Why, I even wait until midnight to give them a full advantage of the dark. And if one eludes me only till sunrise, he wins the game. Suppose he refuses to be hunted. Ivan is such an artist with these. Invariably, Mr. Rainsford, invariably they choose to hunt. And when they win? To date, I have not lost. Oh, Rainsford, you'll find this game worth playing. When the next ship arrives, we'll have gorgeous sport together. You murdering rat, I'm a hunter, not an assassin. Come, Rainsford, say you will hunt with me. Hunt men? Say you will hunt with me! No. What do you think I am? One I fear who dare not follow his own convictions to their logical conclusion. I'm afraid in this instance, Mr. Rainsford, you may have to follow them. What do you mean? I shall not wait for the next ship. Four o'clock. The sun is just rising. Osteknicki to Rishniki. Come, Mr. Rainsford. Let us not waste time. said last evening. Only after the kill does man know the true ecstasy of love. Suppose you lose. If I do not, what shall I say, find you between midnight and sunrise tomorrow, freedom for both of you. I'm going with you. No. you will kill you too. Not at all. One does not kill a female animal. If you lose, I can easily recapture her alive. All right. I'll take her with me, then. We'll set up a trail, you'll remember. It's only fair to advise you against Fog Hollow. Outdoor chess, Mr. Rainsford.
that it could happen in America. That it could happen now. That it could ever happen to me. Another murder tonight. At Watergate. My apartment. <laughs> As we return to the most dangerous game, Count Zaroff's game of outdoor chess begins, Rainsford becomes the hunted, and Fay Ray can be seen in some very familiar surroundings. Don't lose your nerve. We beat this thing. The others didn't. We will. Let's get going. It seems as though we've come miles. Yeah. Well, three hours doesn't take you far in this jungle. Come on, let's keep going. Come on. Just a little more of this, then easy downhill going. Soon be safe. He was so sure. This island's no bigger than a deer park. Oh, Bob. Come on now. What are we going to do? We didn't each live through a shipwreck to let this crazy manhunter worry us. I shouldn't have come with you. You might beat him if you were alone. Alone? And leave you here with that savage? Not a chance. Now we've got to think of something to worry him. Oh, you'd never get near him. He'd shoot on sight. Weapons aren't everything in the jungle. Say, did you notice that leaning tree down there? The one we just passed? Yes. Come on, I want to show you something. You see? If that supporting branch were cut away, this fallen tree would make a perfect melee deadfall. A melee deadfall? What's that? A man-killing contraption that natives use. 
And stop that madman, all right. The trouble is, it takes quite a few hours to build. He said he wouldn't follow till midnight. That's right. If you help me, I think we'll have time. Come on, we'll cut some strong vines. There. Almost ready. That bracelet of yours makes a fine guide ring for my necktie. He'll have been on his way almost an hour now. Look out. Don't touch that trip line, you'll have a two-ton tree down on your back. Jungle wood's as heavy as iron. Will it really work? I've never known a living thing to get by one yet. Look here. You touch that trip line, you'll pull that trigger free. Once that's loose, there's nothing to keep the log from coming down. It'll crash down and kill anything underneath it. that anyone who has hunted leopards would follow you into that ambush? Oh, very well. If you choose to play the leopard, I shall hunt you like a leopard. hunt a leopard. It means he's gone for his high-powered rifle. His rifle? Oh, Bob, we must get away from here. Run, run. Eve, wait.
Very good, Rainsford. Very good. You have not won yet. Look at your watch. Are you looking at it? Still have an hour till sunrise. Swamp or no swamp, we can keep ahead of them that long. As you are doubtless saying, the odds are against me. You have made my rifle useless in the fog. You cannot blame me if I overcome that obstacle. running through the jungle. Here, trying to avoid the mad Count Zaroff rather than the 50-foot-tall eighth wonder of the world, King Kong. <laughs> In fact, this film is part of a great two-year run of genre films Ms. Ray had, starting with the sci-fi thriller Dr. X, followed by this film, The Most Dangerous Game, then The Vampire Bat, which we've shown here in the Nerve Rack and Theater, followed by Mystery of the Wax Museum, the film which Vincent Price's House of Wax was a remake of. Then, of course, King Kong. Ha <laughs> ha! Five great genre films in just two years. Here's to you, Fay Ray. From ancient Genesis to the modern screen, is the name written in blood. Ega! If, if I, I could just call you on the phone. The code of the ghost at the sign of the toe. Nobody lives on the Brownsville Road. Thrill to the newest recording star, Arturo Jr. Oh, the scream in this way. See ravishing Marilyn Manning in a thrilling, chilling story. The last of the prehistoric giants sees his first girl. Noah. Curious newsmen search deep in giant country for the last of the ancient cavemen. See a tough giant, tamed by the soft hands of his captive woman. See him sacrifice his ageless beard for her love. The loser to a boy in a dune buggy, escaping a burning desert. Ega's primitive passion was love or kill. Here, Ega talk, the ancient language of love, used at the beginning of time. Ega. 
was like Connor. Now I know how they felt. of the air, the animals of the forest. They shall be my ears and my eyes. And because I see your most secret acts, you will know me as the beast with a million eyes. From worlds beyond comes a weird and wanton intelligence, a beast with a million eyes, making of a woman's dog, her attacker, setting up by a flames of wild desire, making of a man's friend, a violator of every code of decency, guilty of acts you'll never believe. See a man fight against supernatural forces for the girl he loves. See a beast with a million eyes control a ship from outer space. One of the most fantastic terror thrills the screen has ever brought you. See the beast with a million eyes. And now, on to the exciting conclusion of The Most Dangerous Game. And then, after that, a special surprise. Is Rainsford dead? Is Count Zaroff victorious? And what of the lovely Fay Ray? Let's find out.
Ahmed, Miss Trowbridge, bring her here. Now! My dear Rainsford, I congratulate you. You have beaten me. Not yet. Oh, but of course I insist. Why, you're... You're not even wounded. You hit the dog, not me. I took a chance and went over with him. A clever trick, Rainsford. I cheerfully admit defeat. Here's the key of the boathouse. The door is in the trophy room. You and Miss Trowbridge may leave at once. No! <laughs> from a classic story. <laughs> and one more point of interest about this movie. 
Ivan, Count Zaroff's silent and faithful Russian servant, whom we saw impaled earlier, was played by African-American actor Noble Johnson, best known to horror fans as the native chief in King Kong and the Nubian servant in the classic 1932 The Mummy, starring Boris Karloff. In tonight's film, he played Ivan, a Russian, one of the few if not only, examples in early film history of a black actor playing a white role. We'll be right back. Do you love horror, science fiction, B-movies, horror hosts, old-time radio, just plain spooky stuff? Then you should sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. You'll be supporting the production of Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror films ever made. Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, featuring the best of old time radio horror. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, showing classic 1950s sci fi shows for Star Cadets of all ages. Plus, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content like Behind the Curtains of the Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a deep dive into radio horror. Lord Blood Draws B Movie Reviews, a look at a classic low budget drive in feature, and much more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash Lord Blood Draw for the love of horror. How much Jack do you think's in that strong box? Uh, there's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. Here's what happened. The general beat his friend Castro to the Cuban treasury. The strong box is now on this boat. So are a deported American gangster and his mall. And lurking in the depths is the creature from the haunted sea. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. Be calm, everybody. The boat's insured. Well, my lords and ladies, as always here in the Nerve Rackin' Theater, a short film for me means a big surprise for you. And in continuing our theme of weapons, marksmanship, and hunting, we present an adventure with that old history hunter himself, Captain Zero. <laughs> in tonight's adventure, Captain Zero meets one of the greatest marksmen in history, Switzerland's own William Tell. And, you know, yeah, I thought it was just all a story, too, about shooting the apple off his kid's head and stuff like that. But, um, apparently it's true. Ha <laughs> ha! My lords and ladies, here is Captain Zero meets William Tell. Somewhere in a remote, uncharted region of the planet called Earth stands the laboratory of Captain Zero. In this secret location, known only to a few in the outside world, Captain Zero and his associates 
experiment in time and space to learn from the past to plan for the future. Man, this sure come a long way since the bow and arrow. Yes, but the bow and arrow is still a pretty effective weapon, Jeff. Has been for centuries. In fact, a really skilled bowman can be almost as accurate with his arrows as we can be with our ray guns. Remember the story of William Tell shooting the apple off his son's head? Yes, but I don't believe it. You mean, you don't think William Tell really lived? No. Do you? Suppose we activate the time machine and find out. Okay. What's his name? Well, if I remember the legend correctly, William Tell supposedly lived in the village of Berglund, near the town of Altdorf, high in the Swiss Alps. Let's see, Berglund. B, B, U, R, B, U, here it is. Okay, set the longitude and the latitude. Yes, sir. Longitude, 8 degrees, 39 minutes, 10 seconds east. 8 degrees, 39 minutes, 10 seconds east. Latitude, 46 degrees, 51 minutes, 30 seconds north. 46 degrees, 51 minutes, 30 seconds north. Right. Now, set the year for 1307. 1307. November the 18th. November the 18th. About 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Set the voltage at 8.4 and stand by and activate the cycle reactor. Petro. Yes, sir. Stand by for operation of the time machine. Yes, sir. Where to this time, Captain? We're going to try to pick up William Tell back in the year 1307. Father? Someday I, too, am going to be the greatest bowman in Switzerland, just as thou art. I'm sure thou wilt, Heinrich, if there is still a Switzerland. There's still a... What does thou mean, Father? Thou art yet a little boy, Heinrich. But if something should happen to me, thou shouldst know why. But what could happen to thee, Father? These are evil times, my son. The ancient rights and freedoms of the Swiss are being taken away by the Austrian emperor and his cruel governors. Already foreign soldiers fill the land, and they take away our crops and cattle for taxes. The Swiss have always been free men, but now the Austrian rulers would make slaves of us. But is there nothing we can do? Can we not resist? Thou hast courage, my son. I am proud of thee. Aye, we can resist, and we shall. Now, no more of this. Off to bed with thee. Yes, father. All right, Henry. Open the door. Yes, Tell. Heinrich Walter. What news? Some good, some bad. Hang up the clue, Walter. Henry. Off to bed, did you know? But, Father, can I not stay and listen? No, it is past thy bedtime. Yes, Father. Art thou still taking me to Altdorf tomorrow? Aye, if we go to Altdorf tomorrow. Thank thee, Father, and do not worry about the soldiers. We can handle them. Good night, Father. Good night, my son. Good night, Mr. Hurst. Good night, Heinrich. A brave lad. Aye. Sit down, Walter. What of thy news? Tonight I met in secret with 31 others on the shore of Lake Lucerne. They all feel as we do tell. They swore to devote their life to free Switzerland from the tyranny of Austria. Good. We have made a start. Aye, but I know not how 33 men can defeat the arms of Austria. Whoever heard of a good Swiss caring about the number of the enemy? Can we stand tamely by and be trampled underfoot? Never. If we are to pass on to our children the freedom that was handed down to us, we must fight. And this new Swiss Federation is only the beginning. Aye, but it could also be the end. What does thou mean? Governor of Gessler has devised a test to discover all those who would oppose his rule. A test? What kind of test? After the meeting tonight, I came here by way of outdoor. Aye. In the center of the town square, there is now a pole with a cap of Herr Gessler's on top. The governor has commanded that all men who pass must bow to it or suffer the penalty of death. So, he would make slaves of us. Pay homage to an empty bonnet. Tell, do not go to outdoor tomorrow. It will do no good. I have promised Heinrich I would take him to Alto, Walter. And I shall go there like any honest man. No empty cap is going to frighten me from the city. Then I pray thee, do not pass the pole with a cap. 
I shall go where my business directs me, Varda. And I shall bow before no man's empty bonnet. Crummy, I didn't know William Tell was involved in the Swiss Revolution. Stand by to move the time machine ahead one day. Let's find out what happened in the village of Altdorf. Yes, sir. Reset the location to Altdorf and set the time to high noon. Stand by to activate the cycle reactor. Ready? Switch off. Ready? Hold it. Cut the cycle reactor. Stand by to activate the fuse key. Carl, you suppose Tell will bow before the governor's bonnet? I don't know, Jet. But we'll soon find out. Bring up the plate current. Increase the gain on the horizontal axis. Check the carrier frequency. And there's the bonnet on the pole. You there. Homage to the governor's car. Hey, no heat, Andy. We go our own way. Go there. Homage to the governor's cap. Oh, God, stop those two. What's the matter with you? Would you incur the death penalty? Have I done something unlawful? You have insulted the emperor and our lord, the governor, by passing that cap without bowing to it. Does an empty cap command any more respect than a cloak, or a doublet, or a pair of holes? Insolent dog. Do you mock the emblem of royalty? I dare to live as a free man. Why, you no. all... My lord, what is the trouble here? This man refuses to bow to thy royal bonnet. So, another caught in my trap, eh? What is thy name? Wilhelm Tell. The best bowman in all Switzerland. Quiet, Henry. Is this thy son? Aye, my firstborn. I have heard of thee, Tell, and of thy skill at the crossbow. And although thy life is already forfeit because thou didst refuse to bow to the cap, I have inclined to be merciful. If thou canst hit the target which I set up, thy life will be spared. Show me the target. God, lead the boy to yon tree and place an apple on his head. No! Surely thou dost jest. I never jest, William Tell. Unless thou dost shoot the apple from thy son's head, thou dost die. Thou tyrant! Dost thou think I would risk the life of my son to save my own? Thou wilt take thy chances, Tell, or die. Then I die. No, Father, no! Thou wilt shoot at the apple, William Tell, or see thy son slain before thine own execution. Guard, lead the boy to yon tree and place the apple. That's all right, Father. I will stand very still. Thou wilt not miss. Now we shall have sport indeed. Assume the position and open your minds wide. It's time for your cranial cavity search. Ah, yes, my lords and ladies, the cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred uh, by showing what you know. <laughs> and tonight's cranial cavity search question is, in the 1962 kaiju classic King Kong vs. Godzilla, what island is King Kong from? A. Kaiju Island B. Skull Island, C. Faro Island, or D. Nakajima Island. <laughs> which island is the Japanese King Kong from? And which of these commercials would make you shout, Koma, Sharo de Ju, Boon? Hey, geeks, want more Lord Bloodraw? To help support the show and get exclusive content found nowhere else, sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw.
Ha ha! And the answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. In King Kong versus Godzilla, which island is King Kong from? It was C. Faro Island. <laughs> In the 1933 classic King Kong, Kong is, of course, from Skull Island. But in the 1962 film King Kong vs. Godzilla, he is from Faro Island. And you know, whatever island King Kong is found on, we just can't seem to leave the poor guy alone, you know? Anyway. On to the conclusion of Captain Zero Meets William Tell, as we are about to witness the historic moment that made William Tell a legend. And we will also see what came after. Come, Tell. Notch thy arrow and have done with it. Father, look, the very center. Thank heaven the shafts be true. Run home to thy mother quickly, Henry. Quickly. Disperse. Go thy ways. Disperse, I say. Well, thy lucky shot didst hit the apple. But uh, why didst thou take two arrows from thy quiver? And for what purpose didst thou place the second arrow in thy belt? This arrow was to avenge the death of my son, if I had killed him with the other. Avenge? How avenge? Thou didst force me to shoot the apple from my son's head, Herr Gessler, because I would not bow down before thy empty bonnet on yon pole. If I had slain my son, this arrow would have found its mark in thy cruel heart. Why, how dare thee? Guard! Arrest this man. Thou didst promise to spare my life. And so I shall. But thou wilt spend it in chains. Take this rebel to the jailhouse. Aye, my lord. Move you! And seek out his friends and all like him. Aye, my lord. My cap on this pole has done well today. These Swiss peasants will learn that my word is law. They will obey my commands or suffer the consequences. William Tell, the great archer. His bow and his arrows will have little use for him when I have finished with him. William Tell really lived all right, Captain. I'm convinced. It doesn't look as though he's going to live very long yet. Reed Fogart to the jailhouse. I want to find out what that Herr Gessler is up to. Yes, sir. Bring up the beam, Fogart. Increase target voltage. There he is. My people will never bow to thee, Herr Gessler, or thy king, or thy bonnet. We are free men and will never be slaves to a foreign crown. Cease thy prattle, William Tell. The Emperor of Austria will have these lands and I will govern them. There is nothing that thee and thy fellow farmers and goat herders can do to stop us. No. Already they are banding together to drive thee and thy soldiers out of Switzerland. I suspected as much. But without thee as their leader, they will scatter like sheep, and I will dispose of them one by one. Unless they dispose of thee first, thou dost prattle like a fool. My soldiers outnumber thy band a hundred to one. They do not fear. One Swiss is quite equal to a hundred Austrians. Not without thee as their leader. They will find a way to rescue me. Not if thou art not here. What dost thou mean? Thou art a menace to me, William Tell. 
thee in thy loose talk of equal rights and freedom. When my men return, I will have them remove thee to the dungeon in the castle of Kuznacht. Thee and thy fatal bow will never more see the light of day. Thou tyrant! If I could reach thy throat! Down, peasant, if thou wilt wear thy head a while longer! My patience is so oppressed. Thou wilt regret this day, Herr Gessler. My people will avenge thy cruelty. Thy people? The swine. They will bow to the will of Gerhard Gessler, or this land will run red with their blood. Thou beast! Silence thy tongue, William Tell, for I will silence it for thee. Yes. Yes, sir. Stand by to activate the materialization chamber. I'm afraid William Tell is going to need help. Get me the power ray gun. Good. Stand by. Okay, Jeff. Throw the switch. Good luck, Captain. Spectral wave transfers are opening. Turboid activity is increasing. Voltage is building up. Spark gaps are closing. He's transforming to electrical impulses and beginning to dematerialize. There he goes. He's gone. Got him. I hope he got there in time. There's guess on and tell, but where's Captain Zero? Thou art a brave man, Herr Gessler, and thy opponent is bound hand and foot. I've had enough of thy insolence, Tell. Thou wilt not be so stubborn when I have finished with thee. Just a minute, Herr Gettler. Who art thou? Where didst thou come from? Release this man. Who art thou to tell me what to do? Release him, I said. Thy strange clothing doth not frighten me. Harold Ray's a success, all right. He's completely paralyzed. Where does Herr Gessler keep the keys to your chain? What the? What hast thou done to Gessler? What witchcraft is this? Why does he not move? Look, there's no time for explanations. Gessler's men will return any minute. The effects of the ray gun will wear off. Now, where does Gessler keep the keys to your chain? Keys? Yes, on the wall there. There you have the ring. Thank you, stranger. But what has thou done to Herr Gessler? He'll be all right. His locks are rusted. Gessler! Now, thou demon, a hole through thy middle will put an end to thy tricks. Well done, stranger. Well done. You're not safe yet, Tell. Gessler's men will soon return. There. Now look, you've got to get away from here fast. Go out the back way and get to the mountains at once. Aye, and thank you, stranger. I know not who thou art, but I am most grateful. Get to going. Hey, but what of thee? Art thou not joining my band to help free Switzerland of these tyrants? No, you have no further need of me, William Tell. You and your countrymen will free Switzerland yourself. Would that I could be certain. You can, William Tell. You can. Now get away from here, fast. Farewell, stranger. Good luck, Tell. All right, Jet. Take me back. He's transforming from electrical impulses and beginning to materialize. He's coming in. He's in. Good work, Jet. Did Tell get away all right? I don't know. I guess so. No, he's still there. What's the matter with him? Gessler's men will be there any minute. Before I leave thee, Herr Gessler, there's one thing I must do. No, no, tell no. Have mercy. Force me to shoot an apple off my son's head, will thou? No, no, tell. I beg you, have mercy. It must now show me mercy. Stand steady, Herr Gessler. No, no, tell. Steady, thou coward. Mercy. No, tell. Man, he got out of there just in time. Do you suppose the soldiers will catch him? No, they didn't catch him, Jet. Tell got back to his men, all right. And together they united the Swiss people. 
and freed their country from the Austrian rulers. In the year 1308, Switzerland became the first free state in the world. How come there are so few recorded facts of Charles' existence? Well, in those days, there were few written records yet. But the fact that he lived in the heart of his people is enough. Today, William Tell is still a symbol of the swift love of liberty. Hi, boys and girls. Greetings, fellow Z-men. I want to tell you how you can become a commissioned officer of the Zero Explorers in Time and Space and receive an official space passport and identification card. This passport entitles you to travel in accredited spaceships to any planet in our solar system. It also contains my official signature and photograph, as well as regulations for space travel and procedure for rocket ship blast off. Just send your name and address to me, Captain Zero, in care of this station. Your letter will be forwarded to my laboratory by guided missile, and I will immediately send you your official space passport and identification card. So, till we meet again, fellow Z-men, good luck in time and space. Be sure to be standing by when we again transmit you to this remote location on the planet Earth where Captain Zero and his associates will conduct another experiment in time and space. You know, I don't want to tell Captain Zero his business. You know, I mean, he is the explorer in time and space and all that, but uh, do you think he should have interfered there? I mean, isn't there some rule about changing the past to affect the future and all that? Well, I... I guess he knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. <laughs> As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out.